be an investment banker? Should I study economics or business? How about economics or law? How can I, Chris, how can I have, make a good living and still have a proper work-life balance? Those are some of the questions that I've had from the students here in the short time that I've been here at UWC. And they're good questions. They're certainly questions that I wasn't nearly mature enough to answer when I was 16 or 17 or, or I think about at that time. Um, and I have to tell you, my guilty secret is that after, despite the very nice introduction, after 20 some years of working in business, I actually know very little to answer those questions. I'm also sensitive to the fact that when I was your age and sitting where you are, I ignored an awful lot of advice from people who told me about things related to work and business. But I'm going to share with you one piece of advice that I did listen to and I always did find useful and that I think maybe if we can focus on that one can help in some way for you to answer some of those, those questions. The advice that I have is simple, and like all good advice, it's simple, but it gets more interesting as you reflect on it a bit. And so I'd like to do that today. And that's this. In your work or whatever career that you follow, always make sure that you, the company needs you more than you need the company. In other words, when I first heard that advice, it was when I had just started working and I was working in a kind of traditional company. But I think you can generalize that advice to me. Make sure that the organization needs you more than you need the organization. Or if you, if you believe, like I do, that most of life's lessons can be understood by listening to 1970s pop music. <laughs> then you will know the song's the cheap trick song, cheap trick song, I want you to want me. When I first started, when I first started out working, and I first heard that uh, piece of advice from a senior member of the team that I was working with, I understood what it meant, it meant about working hard. It meant about making sure that you're contributing, you're full to the organization, and that you're earning the right to be there. That lesson was useful for me because when I was first three months in the job, I received a letter from the head of human resources which said, thank you for your application, but we regret to inform you there is no suitable role for you with the company at this time. I'd already been with the company for three months, so as you can imagine, that could leave you a little paranoid. <laughs> I took that letter and I saved it and I put it in my desk and I kept it there for about 20 years until later at one point I was managing director of the consulting business in Europe um, to remind myself every day the importance of working hard on behalf of the company and the importance of remembering that anytime you are in a role, you're there in place of someone else that also applied for that role and that you owe it to that person or the others that would have liked to have had that role to work every hard day to contribute to what, uh, to what you can. And to remember that no one is indispensable in, in a role. As I started working longer in the company, I started to think more about what that expression meant. And I started to understand it's not enough just to work hard, but you have to work hard on the right things. You have to work hard on the things that add the most value to the organization. And to do that, you have to be willing to take a chance to volunteer or to go beyond your job. You have to be willing to try out new things and try out new areas that you might not otherwise be comfortable with. Because it's only when you work in the areas that add the most value to the organization that you're truly adding value, more value to the company than you're taking away. And as you do that, you will start to get exposed to other areas. And I often hear people talk about the idea of following your passion. I heard that advice when I, when I was your age as well. But what, I think like many of you, I didn't know what that obvious passion was. And so I couldn't just follow that passion unless I could discover it or find it. And you need to allow yourself the opportunity to be exposed to areas so that you can see where that passion might lie so you can follow that passion. But I think most people 
are not born with a passion. It's one that they discover along the way. And so you have to be available to do that. As I started to work long with the company, I started to think about this idea. Work every day to make sure that the company needs you more than you need the company. I started to focus also on the last part, the part about the company needing you more than you need the company. And what I started to realize is that it's also about the way you see your relationship with the work that you're doing. It's about understanding that you need to find balance in your life outside of what, of what you're doing in terms of your professional work. It's important that you uh, value your work, but it's important that you also build a life outside of it so that you can also be comfortable and don't become too reliant on what the company has to offer. When I was working there, we had, my boss at the time was a guy by the name of Mario Lieser. And Mario had been working for many years in the company. He was a very scary guy. Because Mario only ever asked two questions. He only asked the question that you didn't know the answer to, and the question he already knew the answer to. And Mario, who lived and worked and breathed in the company, after 35 years, as is often the case with people at senior level, got moved aside and had to retire. And he retired to Florida. And three months later, Mario died of a heart attack. In researching for this discussion, I decided to Google his name. And when I Googled his name, what I found was pretty much nothing. There was really no trace of Mario. There were no traces of the many long weekends or the many sleepless nights fussing over the things that were so important when we were working together, which now are of really no importance or not even remembered, not even on the internet. So make sure that in your life, you have a purpose outside of your work in a way that allows you to be sure that the value for your life isn't too much tied up, your status, your financial, uh, financial life isn't too tied up in the work that you do, so that you will be in a position to walk away at a moment of your choosing. Because at some point, you will need to walk away. And it can, it can happen to you that at some point you find that passion, and you will have the opportunity to be in a position to be able to walk away and not to concern about being financially independent, not to be concerned about the status of doing so. So that if you find, for example, that you have an affinity for Caesar salad and salty Armenian cheese, and that you might like to go to a place in the middle of Armenia and teach a group of students to be economic superstars, <laughs> that you will be free to do so at the time and choosing of your uh, of your choice. So in short, and people with the theme, yes, fight, fight, but at the time and place and opportunity of your choice, be prepared to take flight as you want. Thank you.